nation's favourite antiques experts. That's me. I like that. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Hold on. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> on guard. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. I can't believe it. There'll be worthy winners <laughs> yes. and valiant losers. Okay, I was robbed. Will it be the high road to glory? Right, come on, let's go. Or the slow road to disaster? Oh, road. Ah! Oh, road. This is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> Top dollar. <laughs> We're soaking up the scenery in the gorgeous Peak District, with views guaranteed to turn heads. Isn't that beautiful down there? Eyes on the road, Phil. Eyes on the road. Sorry. Yeah. Our distracted driver is auctioneer Philip Serrell, and keeping him right is Izzy Balmer, also known to wield a gavel from time to time, heading out on the penultimate leg of their journey. So is this home for you? It's the Staffordshire side of the Peak District, but it is the Peak District nevertheless. So it feels like home. It's in my blood. I was going to say to you, did you spend a lot of time in the Peak District when you were young, but you still are, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I like you, Phil. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think the feeling's mutual after last time out. When Izzy helped herself to a brace of brooches. This is going to be the last brooch. This is it. No more after this. Oh, yeah. And her old china bought some old china. This is Nanking cargo. But at the auction, Phil's fortunes took quite a hammering. I need comforting and, and looking after. Big hug. You haven't let me forget, have you? No. No. You're not going to, are you? No. No. You lost really quite a lot of money. If I was you, I'd be feeling awful. I'd be thinking, how on earth am I ever going to catch that Izzy Barmer up? She's just amazing. Izzy, <laughs> this is a marathon, not a sprint. It's been more like a three-legged race for Phil so far. He started with £200 and made great strides, but he fell flat on his face last time out and now is on £314.10. But after starting on the same amount, Izzy has leapfrogged into the lead and is now the proud possessor of £381.70. But Phil is hoping to level the playing field. I've got a real request for you, Izzy. OK. Please. I know what's coming. No more brooches. I won't. I promise. No more brooches. I make you a pledge, Mr okay. Serrell. I am not buying any more brooches. The only exception, and I mean this, no, is... you can't have an exception. Oh, Phil, if no more bad, brooches no. is no more brooches. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. But to help them cross the finish line, they've got this nippy little 60s TR4A. It used to be a triumph, but it's had a little accident. The old uh, Riumph is performing well. It is. I see she hasn't got her tea back. No, has we've missed a tea. Mr. T. Do you like the way I did that? It's Mr. T. Mr. T. Oh, I'm straight over my head. I know. When you have to explain your jokes, there's a problem, isn't there? I pity the fool. The trip kicked off in Kent and wandered its way across the country from east to west. We're now doing a bit of the Midlands before we end up at a final auction in Stamford, Lincolnshire. This time out, we'll have a shufty in Staffordshire and Shropshire in search of things to buy, ending up at a shop in Shifnal. But our pair get the ball rolling today in Congleton. This Cheshire town was once renowned for making silk and other fabrics. But what do you do with the mill when production stops, eh? Ah, fill it full of antiques, of course. This looks a big old place, Phil. It, well, I'm going to pay catch up here, is he? Well, I'm going to leap out then and try and get a head start. Bye. She's full of beans this morning, isn't she? Come on, Phil. Slow and steady wins the race. There's a lot to take in. Four expansive floors full of treasures to discover in here. Should keep our two out of mischief for a while. The cabinets are very tempting and I'm trying to resist looking in them because if I look, I might see a brooch and I might be tempted. So I'm going this way. You can do it, Izzy. It's all about willpower. Oh, the coat's off. She means business. I'm a little bit in two minds about this. It's quite clearly a sampler. It is a piece of needlework often completed by children to show off their sewing skills. Samplers can sell really well. Now, there are a couple of things to look for in a sampler. Age. So, ideally, you would like them to be Georgian and, ideally, 18th century. The second thing is condition. The third thing is how detailed it is. And the other very important thing is the younger the girl, the better. That's four things. But carry on. 
Now, this one isn't a great example for pretty much all of those reasons I've listed, really. So there's not that much detail in the center here. There's a huge amount of age staining. There was never a, a huge amount of use of color and, and what is left of it, other than the red, has faded quite significantly. Poor Sarah Walton having her handiwork besmirched like that. However, what I do like about this, despite it not being the most detailed, is the snake entwined around the tree. The serpent in, in religion obviously signifies temptation because you have Adam and Eve and the serpent um, suggesting to Eve that she should pick the apple from the tree. It's priced up at £58. Are you tempted? What do I think it will sell for? It might only be 50 to 60 pounds, but sometimes they can get a bit carried away if you have two people that really like them. I think this is worth the shot. The other reason I like it, it does not look anything like a brooch. <laughs> That's sound logic there. Now, after his thrashing at the last auction... No, what I mean, Izzy. <laughs> looks like Phil's in a pugilistic mood. Izzy, come and meet your fate. Look at these, Izzy, I've got you at last. I think not. On oh, guard. <laughs> Bluff. Crikey. Never bring a fist to a sword fight, Phil. Let's settle this the old-fashioned way by buying antiques, eh? Book early to see the Graham Moffat comedies. I really like that. It's a monochrome poster, but it's just lifted up by the little boy in the red bobble hat and the jumper, the lady's red hat, her handbag. It's late Edwardian, and it's that era that gives it a look. And I think it's really, really lovely and priced up at £100. Nearly a third of your budget, Phil. To try and buy that for what I want to pay for, it's probably too big an ask, even for me. I'm cheeky, but I'm not that cheeky. The play's not the thing, though. Keep looking. Elsewhere, Izzy is veering dangerously close to those cabinets. I'm not breaking any of my own rules by looking in a cabinet, because this one hasn't got any brooches in it. She still can't resist a bit of jewellery, though. It's an Art Deco bangle. It's a double-headed snake. Maybe that's going to be my thing. I'm off brooches, I'm now onto snakes. And it's just set with little paste stones. Some people might call it ivorine. Basically, it's plastic. And very early plastic, mind you. It's celluloid, made to look like ivory. Much kinder to the elephants. Now, this one, it's quite large. It'd fall off my wrist, actually. But I do really like it, and... It's only priced at £38. Now, these can make quite a bit more money than that. They're usually a bit more detailed than this one. But to have an Art Deco plastic bangle in quite good condition, you know, it, it is quite flimsy and it hasn't broken and snapped and been re-glued together. And, you know, if you're walking around with a bit of plastic on your wrist, you were trendy, you were cool, you were fashionable, you were glam. Well, I'm all for a bit of glam. Let's grab your other snaky item and try and do a deal. Ken? Yes, Izzy? Ken, I have found two items and there's a bit of a theme going on with them. This one's a serpent and this one has a serpent. Right, so you're into snakes today? I am. Now, this one's priced at £38. The sampler is priced at £58. What's the very best they could be? 45 for the sampler. Yep. And knowing the dealer, they will do... 25 for the bangle. So that's 70 pounds for the two of them. For the two. You've got a deal. Super. So that serpent like sale leaves her with a little under 312 pounds in hand. Time our snake charmer slithered off, I think. Now, back to the other fella. Anything pinging on the several radar? Look at those. I mean, if you're going to get a pair of scissors, get a pair of scissors. How about those? Those are fantastic. You could give yourself a serious haircut with those, Phil. I would think this is for cloth. Yeah. But, like, fair-sized rolls of cloth. So this has got G. Wilkin of Sheffield, which is obviously the manufacturer of these. I would say they're probably 19th century. And I'm kind of guessing, if you're working like that, perhaps you just rest it on a table to cut your cloth. You don't have to keep manhandling it up and down. And these little things here, which I think are tighteners, but they're also rest, you know, so that when you're going to pick it up, it's just there waiting for you. £95 is the ticket on that, but will they do well at auction? Well, let me tell you, I've never seen a pair of scissors like that and I wouldn't have a clue. I'm going to go and find Ken. Right. Why are we whispering? Ken? Yes, Phil? These are wicked, aren't they? And they're haberdashers scissors. Yeah, I think they are, yeah. I don't suppose 45 quid a buy them, would it? I don't think so. I know this dealer. It will come down. Yeah. 75. Let me make you my best bid. My best bid would be 60 quid. Go on, I'll take 60 then. You're a gentleman. There you are.
a snip. <laughs> That's cut his budget down to £254. Mind you, with his first purchase done, let's head for the car. But no running. Now, taking advantage of the best the British weather has to offer, Izzy's popped out for a walk in the park. Oak Edge Park, to be precise, near Wolseley Bridge in Staffordshire. She's here to try her hand at a sport that's a test of skill, patience and aim. But where's her instructor? Oh, <laughs> just follow the sound of gunfire. Hey, Andy. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well. You don't miss a shot, do you? <laughs> well, with nearly 40 years of shooting under his belt, Andy Plants had lots of practice. Andy, it's quite a setup you've got here. What have I got myself into? It's called clay pigeon shooting, or nowadays called clay target shooting. The idea is to be able to hit a moving target with a shotgun. So clay pigeons, as in the bird? It goes back to the 18th century, in the mid-1700s. Shooting birds on the wing was quite popular, and it became competition where the birds were in a box, which was called a trap, and you called pull. They pulled a rope, the trap flipped up, and the birds flew out, and they were pigeons. But even back in the 19th century, the idea of killing birds purely for sport rather than food was seen as cruel and distasteful. So, much to the relief of pigeons, shooters came up with all manner of artificial flying targets to practice their aim and continue their sport. In Britain, the target was basically a glass ball filled with feathers to make it more interesting when it broke so the people didn't sort of have withdrawal symptoms. Sounds more like a Christmas decoration or a <laughs> snow globe. Yeah, yeah, but a bit bigger, yeah, a bit bigger. When the glass balls were sent out, it was basically just a spring arm and it threw the ball away. But the problem with the glass ball, when you're shooting out in a field that was used with livestock, there were glass shards. Oh. Into the story steps American inventor George Legowski. After seeing children skimming clam shells across a lake, he came up with a flying disc for a target, and that, with a few technical tweaks and improvements, is what is still used in the sport today. That's a standard clay pigeon target. The clays are made out of china clay and bitumen, and they biodegrade, so when the clay flies out, they still refer to a clay broken as a kill. The machine that sends the clay is still called a trap, so they're spinning, they're like a little mini frisbee. But the traps are very adjustable and you can adjust the height, you can adjust the angles. So the idea then was that the target could mimic the flight of ordinary birds. Well, I think we should see it in action. OK, Izzy, this is the trap. This is the machine that sends out the clays for people to shoot at. I'd like you to operate it. So when I shout pull, I'd like you just to press the button. Joe Sat's done, Andy. Safety's off. Pull. Good shot, sir. Shooting used to Pull. be the preserve of the upper class. Now it's a fast-growing sport with competitors from all walks of life. Oh, I missed one. Happens to everybody. There are clay shooting venues across the country and the grounds here at Oak Edge even hosted the British Open Championships back in 2018. Right, that's my go. Now it's time for you to try. Now, when you're a novice like Izzy, it's vital to be trained by a qualified instructor like Andy, as safety is paramount with firearms. She's got the basics down now, so good luck, Carl. So, into my shoulder. Proper stance. Proper stance, cheek. That's excellent. In. OK, are you ready? She'll give it her best shot. Thing on the trigger. Mm -hmm. Target's on its way. Now, lift and shoot. That's good, you're only just over the top. Target's on its way. Now. Lift, shoot. That's much better. Not quite hit anything yet, though. It goes so fast. I'm, yeah. I get, like, brain dead. I forget that I'm meant to focus on yeah. it. Never mind. Let's try again. Now, lift. Ah! What? That was that close. You took paint off it. One more chance. Lift and shoot. Yes! She got it! Ah, yes! OK, break the gun. <laughs> You have to remember to do all the safety things before you can celebrate. Yeah. And now I can be like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> nice shooting, Hawkeye. Excellent. Yay! Out and about in Staffordshire, our Phil is also having to weather the weather. I'm trying to think of that musical comedian whose catchphrase was, 
Turned out nice again. That'd be George Formby. Well, let me tell you, it has not turned out nice again. It is raining and raining hard. Whoop. The roof, or as we now call it, the sieve, isn't functioning very well. It feels just like I'm about to go into a tunnel. Oh, and lo and behold, Lord above. Dark in here, isn't it? But on the other side lies the country town of Stafford, where, a few doors down from this splendid old edifice, is Phil's next shop. What's it called? Windmill Antiques. Well, what else? <laughs> this is one of those shops where I am just petrified I might knock something over. But there's such a diverse range in here. You've got enamel signs, you've got bits of furniture, china, a lot of war-related items. And it's all presided over by Ian, who never lets a bit of shop space go to waste. Now, what can our man throw his £254 at? Go, Phil. Do you know what? These are a real bygone antique. This is a Victorian walnut grandfather's chair. This would date to somewhere between 1865 and about 1880. If it didn't have these arms and just came straight down and none of this here, it would be a grandmother's chair. Quite why grandfathers need arms, I don't know, but there you go. You've got little short cabriole legs here, not unlike my own. And the whole of this showwood frame is carved here. So we've got this cresting rail up here that's carved. But just look at these scrolls here. That is just absolutely fantastic. Very fancy. No ticket on it, though. You'll have to ask. Ian? Phil? Oh. I kind of like that chair in the window. Nice 19th century chair. Well, it would have been better still 20 years ago, wouldn't it? It was like three to five hundred pounds, wasn't it? Yeah, it would have been. And now you're going to struggle to get a hundred quid for it, aren't you, in an auction? I am off you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your reputation precedes you, Mr. Serrell. What's the best you can do that for, please? You can have that for 50 quid. 50 pounds? Really? Really. This is the bit where I kind of usually bid you, but I don't feel I can do that, can Not I? under these circumstances. OK, £50, I'll take the chair. Thank you. While I'm here, behind you, is that a tea canister? It is. Ooh, new stuff. And those things are quite fun, aren't they? People convert them into table lamps and that type of thing. But they repro them a lot, don't they? They do, but this is a genuine one. OK, how old is that one? Uh, this would be late 1800. They were made all over the country, but this one was made in Bristol. How do you know that's made in Bristol? Because it says so on the back. Well, you can't argue with that, can you? The ticket price on this is 100. 50 quid wouldn't buy it, or 55? Not quite. 60 quid. And I'll have a deal with you. 60 quid, we'll call it a deal. Another super discount. Add in that chair, and his running total is £110. But he's not done yet. Oh, no. Ian very kindly has let me have a little furkle through his drawers. Gosh, and they've only just met. I know that he specialises in First and Second World War stuff. It would be quite nice if I could just buy a bit of military. What's in here? So this is a Second World War RAF sweetheart's brooch in the form of a propeller. And that would have been a gift to a loved one by a serving officer in the RAF. And the key thing for me with that is the B word. It's a brooch. And I know someone who's had a lot of success with brooches. If you can't beat them, join them. This is an interesting thing, look. On War Service 1915. So this is a button badge or a lapel badge that you would have worn in the First World War when you weren't in uniform. I just think this is just absolutely wonderful. Look at this. There was a fund to raise money for Spitfires in the Second World War in the Battle of Britain. And when you donated your money, you'd have collected a little Spitfire Club badge. Those three things are really, really, really quite evocative. And I think also that there's a demand for things like that in the marketplace today. Better have another chat, then. Ian? Yes, Phil? These three bits here, what could you do those for, please? Well, the ticket price on those should be £50, say, 30 quid. That's your best shot? I think it is, yeah. I'll have those, if I may. So that's £60 for the bit of tin. Yep. £50 for the chair, that's 110 Yep. And the 30 for these is £140. Is my maths right? Impeccable. Right, I think Ian wants his counter back now, so take your remaining £114 and go and pick up your compadre. Oh, apart from a bit squeaky, how's the car, Phil? I love this car. In fact, I'm going to whisk you off into the sunset, Izzy, in my, in my Ryan. I like the sound of that. Good luck finding a sunset in this weather. <laughs> Nighty night. <laughs> It's a very fresh Shropshire morn, and our couple of tourists are up early, taking in some of the county's attractions. Look at that. 
That's the Reekin, isn't it? The Reekin? Have you heard the expression, all around the Reekin? No. All around the Reekin is an expression. It means you're sort of, well, you're going round and round and round that hill thing over yonder. So you're just going round and round in circles? Yeah, correct. Sounds like your average road trip, then. <laughs> now, how did we get on yesterday? Izzy, what did you buy? Oh. Hit me with the beans, Izzy. I can hit you with another bee. Not another brooch. It's in the glove compartment. Well, I like that, actually. Well, I bought it thinking it was a double-headed snake bangle. And it is, isn't it? But now I'm looking at it and thinking it doesn't look anything like a snake, and what on earth have I done? And I've just gone and spent £25 on a bangle. What's that made out of? Well, it's Art Deco, so yeah. it's an early type of plastic, so it's probably celluloid. Isn't that what you get on your bottom? That, my darling, is cellulite. Oh, right, OK. Blimey. <laughs> R. Izzy also forked out on a 19th century sampler. I think this is worth the shot. But she still has a princely £311.70 at her disposal. Phil saw his budget trimmed down to £114.10p after picking up a huge pair of scissors. How about those? Those are fantastic. As well as a tea canister, a Victorian grandfather's chair, and a collection of military badges, one of which might be right up R. Izzy Street. I went down the B route as well, Izzy. Did, no. <gasps> Guess what I bought? Did you? Oh my goodness, did you buy a brooch? I bought a brooch. <gasps> yeah! I bought a Woohoo! Yes, he's seen the light. Eventually, those wares will be off to an auction in Middle Littleton. But let's start out our shopping today in Shrewsbury, or Shrewsbury. The pronunciation is hotly contested, so to avoid offending any Salopians, let's call it the county town of Shropshire. Ah. What's not up for debate is that it is the location of Izzy's next shop, Memory Lane. Let's take a walk down it, shall we? Any of these lovely things tempting you to delve deep into your pockets, Izzy? I would quite like to get something that I don't normally go for, but it's kind of like out there and out there. And I'm sort of out there rather than out there, you know? Clear as mud. Now, is that out there or just out there? It says a speculative pencil drawing and then at the bottom, L.S. Lowry. Ah, the renowned Lancashire painter, famed for his pictures of industrial life in the early 20th century. It says it's a pencil drawing. I think it looks a bit more like ink from here, to be fair. But if it is a Lowry, it's £110, which doesn't seem that much. His originals are in museums like the Tate and places. But his prints, if they're assigned prints, they can sell for a couple of thousand pounds at auction. It's dated 1951. It's obviously been folded up for a very long time because you can see the staining to the folds and the damage, like where it's starting to tear along those weakened lines. So perhaps in that sense, it only is worth £110. If it's not the real McCoy, that could be £110 down the pan. Keep looking and see if anything else captures my eye. Well, that's quite conspicuous. Can get this up. Ooh. Steady. Um, I've seen this flag, which now I've got it out doesn't actually look quite as impressive as I'd hoped because it's quite small and faded. But it's the Union flag, early 20th century. The label says it's World War I. It certainly looks the part and it's got the age staining and then some little moth holes and holes in it, which unfortunately are all going to affect the value. But Union Jacks, British flags, military flags can do really well. Now, admittedly, you do want them a bit bigger than this one. This one is quite small. Um, but it's only priced at £25. And I could wave this as I do victory against Mr Serrell. Pride before a fall and all that, hey? Let's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. Hello. Hello. You must be Holly. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hello. I've had a good look round your beautiful shop. What I have found is this flag, which I'm hoping is going to lead me to victory. Well, that'd be I'm nice, hoping. wouldn't it? So it's priced at £25, and um, I'm just going to give you £25. Oh, thank you. I know, it makes a change, doesn't it? <laughs> 10, 20 and 5. There we go. And onwards to victory and yeah, all that. Yeah, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That leaves her with a little under £287 still to play with. Now, it looks as if the Queen is in residence, so it's time to head out. Philip, meanwhile, is starting his day out in the country at the Shropshire town of Much Wenlock. 
He's at Kewan Wildlife Rescue to come face to face with one of Britain's best loved wild mammals, and one that's sadly now being classified as vulnerable to extinction. Faye, how are you doing? All right. Hi, how are you? What have you got there? Looks like a little pincushion. Not quite, it's a hedgehog. Oh, isn't he lovely? And his handler is Faye Vass, the CEO of the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. He's a British or, or European hedgehog. Yeah. Scientific name is Erinaceus europea. I'll settle for hedgehog, I think. Yeah, probably a good idea. <laughs> They've been around for longer than you might think, about 15 million years. They were around before sabre-toothed cats, woolly mammoths, that kind of thing. In Middle Ages, they were thought of as being related to witches. Really? And that they were harbingers of doom, and that if you saw one, bad luck was on its way. Probably the worst thing that happened to them was Queen Elizabeth I passed a bill in 1566, which said that hedgehogs were responsible for, for crop damage on the agricultural land. Um, and so she put a price on their head. If a hedgehog were killed, it was worth three pence to the person who killed it. The reputation of the humble hedgehog was restored in the Victorian era when they were sometimes kept in kitchens to keep insects under control. But in more recent times, these shy, nocturnal creatures have come under threat once more. There's lots of dangers that hedgehogs face, and probably the biggest problem is loss of habitat and fragmentation of habitat. So there might be pockets of land that are good for hedgehogs, but if they don't join up, it can't sustain a population. Oh, that's awful. Which is why the Preservation Society came about in 1982 to protect our spiny little friends. It was set up by Major Adrian Coles after he discovered a hedgehog that had fallen into a cattle grid. And he realised it had no means of escape and would die unless he saved it. So he got a milk pan, rescued the hedgehog, and because he was a Shropshire County Councillor at the time, he persuaded them to put ramps in all of their cattle grids so that hedgehogs could escape should they fall in. And the publicity that followed from that made him form the, the Hedgehog Society. The Society works to improve the plight of the hedgehog, encouraging people to make their gardens more hog-friendly and lobbying to give the species more legal protection. They also work with rescue centres across the country where animals who are sick or injured get looked after by people like Beth Robinson. Beth, are you the chief hedgehog nurse? I am chief hedgehog nurse of Kew and Wildlife. How many hedgehogs have you got in here? This year, altogether, we've had actually over a thousand hedgehogs in through, through our doors, and actually currently we have over 200 hedgehogs in our care. Main reasons that they actually come in, it's young autumn juveniles that are struggling to gain weight for hibernation. So it can take up to a couple of months sometimes to get them actually out and a good weight for, for release. And to make sure they're on the road to recovery, they need regular checkups. So here's one of our little hedgehogs oh, that we've got. So he's a couple of months old at the moment and he's been with us since a tiny little hoglet. I'm just going to give him a little sharp injection here. What's that for then? That's actually um, a really strong wormer. Just a second and it's in. Beth, I've got a favour to ask you. Yes. Can I hold one? Of course you can. He's been dying to ask that. Better get gloved up then. Ow, you little rascal. They are noted for their prickles, Phil. Oh, look at you. Can he see me? He can, yeah. That's probably why he's rolled up in a little ball. Oh, look at his little face. Let's put him down. There you are, matey. So how much does he weigh? He weighs five ounces. It's an ongoing struggle to preserve these little beasties, as hog numbers have declined by 50% in the last 20 years. But hopefully the work of these hedgehog heroes will give them a fighting chance of survival. Beth, that's been fantastic. I just one last time. You've let me pick him up. <laughs> Can we call him Phil? Hey, she might be even Phyllis. <laughs> From one prickly customer to a smooth operator, Izzy is on the move. I've still got loads of money left, so I would really like to spend a good chunk of that, if not all of it. I'd like to buy what I call a proper antique. Well, I'm all for that. Let's see what you can find for your remaining £286 in the Shropshire town of Shifnal. Corner Farm Antiques is your final destination, and you'll have it all to yourself until a fella called Tiggy Winkle arrives. <laughs> you want proper antiques? They've got proper antiques. Some a bit too proper for you to afford, but they have more budget-friendly pieces too. Look out. I have spotted something right at the back here. A brass and ormolu thermometer. What I like about this is the bird upon the top and also the fact that it's gold because true to type, I'm going for something glitzy. 
I think it's 19th century. I say that hesitantly because it's in quite good condition and it's quite shiny. But if you look at the base, that just has a lot of age to it there. It's sort of all rusted. You've got that great big screw. And the fact that it's all Malou, you tend to think of it as French and French clocks, and it tends to be an 18th and 19th century type of decoration. Indeed, the word Ormolu is French for ground gold, but this thing is basically gilded bronze. I just think it's pretty. It is, however, £148, and I don't think it's worth that at auction. I will park it for now and see what else I find. One more to think about, then. Uh-oh. Phil's arrived. What does he think he looks like? What are you doing? You might well ask. Phil, I've got a great gag. Right, what? this is amazing. You ready? Yeah. The yoke's on you. Fantastic. <laughs> I do the jokes. Shall we get back to shopping then? <laughs> oh, lordy. Yeah, Sideways, work, Phil. Well, <laughs> he's got that out of his system. Let's see if he can spend some of that £114 of his. There's lots of really, really shiny, sparkly things in here that I will be right up Miss Barmer Street. But there's one thing that I really, really love. And it's not so much the object that I like, but it's who it's by. Here's a little bit of George Jensen. The renowned Danish silversmith from the early 20th century. Items produced by his company are very collectible. And it's basically a little heart-shaped locket. And you open it up and you've got a space for a photograph there. As an object, do I like it? Well, probably not that much. But it's a piece of George Jensen. And just a way on one piece would be really, really special. That's got a ticket price of £58. It kind of looks like it's out of period, in that it's George Jensen, but after George Jensen died. I mean, that is very sort of 70s, isn't it? Sort of flared trousers and permed hair, really, a little bit. The thing about this is you're not buying a silver locket. You're buying George Jensen. At least I hope I'm buying George Jensen. Only one way to find out. Rosie! Yeah? Are you okay? Yeah, this little George Jensen locket. You've got it priced at £58? Yeah. I need help, Rosie. Do you want the sob story now or later? Um... <laughs> later. <laughs> We've heard it all before. Should we do it for 45 Would 40 quid buy it? Uh... Charmer. OK, we'll do Is it for right? 40 Yeah. You're an angel. The Cyril wink works every time. And that buy leaves him with £74. Elsewhere, with that thermometer still in contention, Izzy's found something else. Are we sitting comfortably? This is a 19th century corkscrew, and in all honesty, I don't know that much about corkscrews, but sometimes the ones with the brushes can do surprisingly well, and sometimes they don't. But I just think it's a bit different and a bit novel, and it's not at all shiny, so it's not what I normally go for. It's a rather nifty rack and pinion job that gets corks out easily, priced at £118. I don't know. I do like it. There's something about it that does appeal to me. I just don't know if I'm going a bit too off-piste here. But, you know, if you don't take a risk in life and if you don't have a bit of fun, then you're never going to get anywhere, are you? That's the spirit. Let's have a word with shopkeeper Tim. You can't go wrong with a Tim. Hello, Tim. I found two items that I really, really love, which is the thermometer at 148 and the corkscrew at 118. Now, I was wondering, I was rather hoping, is there anything we can do on the price? Um, so that's 148, so into 248. We're both trying to do math yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> £266 all in. The thermometer, I'll do that at 110. Right. And the corkscrew, 85. That's uh, 195. You're welcome. Can I be really cheeky? Can I say 180 for the two? Yeah, go on. Amazing. It's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 70 for the corpse crew and 110 for the thermometer leaves her with 106 pounds and 70p. I think it's time to bid farewell. Well, that's it then, Phil. Shropshire done and dusted. Think there's anything we've not done whilst we've been here? Well. I just feel like we should have had some Shropshire blue cheese, don't you? Oh, no, Phil, you're stinky enough as it is. Got very nice. He put a clean scarf on and everything. <laughs> Time for some shut-eye before there's tears, children. Now, where would make a good backdrop for a spot of auction viewing? You do bring me to some spectacular places, is it? I certainly do, don't I? Yes, this should do the trick. This very grand property, whose origins date back over 900 years, is Hooton Pagnell Hall. 
situated in Hooton Pagnall, of course, in South Yorkshire. Meanwhile, the stuff they bought has headed down to Middle Littleton in Worcestershire, up for sale at Littleton Auctions in the room, on the net, and with commission bids left in advance. Izzy stumped up £275 on five auction lots. Let's see if auctioneer Martin Homer finds any of it alluring. Don't need to. The Victorian sampler, we have them in most of our sales and they always do well, very collectible. Philip started with slightly less money, £240, on his five lots. Any standouts, Martin? The grandfather chair is probably my favourite lot. Lovely shape to it, lovely colour to it. I think that's going to do really well. Sounds promising. Let's check out the mood back at the castle. I'm just feeling a bit anxious again. I always feel anxious. I think I might have paid too much money for some of my items. Yes! <laughs> well, there's no turning back now because... What time is it? It's auction time! <laughs> Starting with that sampler of Izzy's. Let's hope it leads the bidders into temptation. I can start you at just £30. Oh. Give me a 30. Okay. Looking for 35. 35 now, 45. 45, 50 on platform one. 65 now. Platform two, OK, so we're in profit. 80 on platform two. This gets better, doesn't 90. it? 90. Excellent. <laughs> All I can see is the look on your face, I tell you what. 140. 140. Do you want not to be a Cheshire cat? 150. 160. At one look at that. Going once, twice. <laughs> I'm going to be very gracious and just sit here smiling. And Sarah Walton's needlework reputation is restored. I'm actually really, really pleased for you. You really look it. <laughs> incredibly pleased for you. Phil's first chance to claw back now are his huge scissors a cut above. They're not what I would think of as your sort of purchase because they're very gold and sparkly. It's your influences. It's wearing off on me. Ah! I can start the bidding at thirty pounds. Oh, no. At thirty. At thirty pounds. Thirty-five comes back to me at forty. At forty pounds, forty-five on platform two. I can go fifty. Oh, he's got a commission. On my commission bid at fifty pounds. I'll give a fifty-five now. Lovely pair of scissors. These at fifty. Lovely pounds. cheap pair of scissors. At fifty pounds. All done. Fair warned at fifty. Will you stop smiling at me like that? Sorry. Let me just rearrange like, my mouth. Just, come on. No haberdashers online today, obviously. It could be worse. The second of Izzy's serpents now, a double-headed snake bangle. 59 bid, thank you. Oh, no. At 15 pounds, is it 18 anyway? It's at a worm, isn't 15 it? 15 pounds, is it 18? And I'm selling at just oh, no. 15 pounds. Are we all done then? 15 pounds. Do you know, I hate to gloat at someone else's misfortune, <laughs> but yay! So much for plastic being glam. The tide has turned, I think. That's a result for me. Don't get too cocky, Phil. Let's see how your grandfather's chair does first. I started at just £40. <laughs> Bids with me on commission at 40 200 That's more like it. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> oh. At £200, 210 to 20 At £220. Bill £220, ladies and gentlemen. Such a good we result. We all done. I'm selling at £220. Well, Mr. Oh! Well done, you! Hey, that's helped, doesn't it? Not off. I'd say that result puts you back in the game, mate. I am absolutely delighted. I was beginning to doubt anything I'd ever bought again, ever. <laughs> One for the Vexillo files now. Izzy's first World War Union flag. 20 I've got, thank you. We're on platform Ooh. 1 at 20. I'm at 20 pounds on platform 1. Do I see 22 anywhere? Are we all done then? And I'm selling at 20 pounds. Sold at 20. I am surprised. I thought there would be a lot more interest in that. I think we'll fly it at half-mast after that loss. You win some, you lose some. Phil's hoping to win some with his next lot. His tea canister, Bristol fashion. £50. That's a help. Good start. 50. Yeah. I'm at 80. Oh. Fantastic. I can go 90 on my book. 110. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. We're at 120 on platform. Bill, doubling your money. I think I'm, right. I'm all right for this to stop two. now. Uh, <laughs> <have a> time. <laughs> I've got room now at 140. I'm looking for 150 now. 150 pounds. I'm at 150 pounds. Have we finished everyone? And away at 150. Well, I knew it all the time, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Another impressive profit for our man. That's a top result. I think that's done really, really well. It exceeded my expectations for it. I bet Izzy would like a similar outcome for her 19th century corkscrew. Can she pull it off? 39 bid, thank you, on platform one. 35 I've got on platform two. I'm on 35. Oh, Phil, I don't... Two, is it this has got a long anywhere? way to go. Yeah. I'm at 35 pound. Are we all done then? Fair one. At just 35 Cheat that, pounds. Izzy. Oh, wow. I think her commanding lead might be slipping away. That was unlucky. Because oh, those well. things can make big bucks, can't they? Took a risk, didn't work. Yeah. Phil's first ever foray into brooches now, part of his military pin collection. I will start you at £50. Pounds. Bid to me on the book. <laughs> That's amazing. 55 on platform two, back to me at 60. 65, I can go back in at 70. At £70. Pound, Today is your now. day, you're on at fire. 75 takes my commission bid out, we're at 75 on platform two. 80 we're at now, oh. at 80 pounds. We'll give a 90. All finished at 80. 80 pounds. I'm absolutely chuffed with that. As well you should be. I think we know which way this one's going. I mean, it's been a great week, whatever, but it's suddenly just got a lot better. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> Izzy's last chance to stop the decline. Hoping for a warm reception for her thermometer. 49 bid, thank you. At £40.50 we've gone to now. We're at £50. Interesting lot, this. £55. Platform one comes in at 60 now. We're at £60. You've got a way to go yet, Izzy. Is we're at 65 now, platform two. At I feel like time's pounds. running out, time's a ticking. 70 I've got, platform one. That's 70 pounds, all done. And I'm no. going to sell at 70 pounds. I think you're really unlucky with that. Decidedly chilly, I'd say. You look wounded, hon. I am. I know what's happening today <laughs> and I don't <laughs> like it. It's not much fun. And it might just get worse because Last up is Phil's silver locket with that big George Jensen name. Straight in at £30, thank you. Straight in, this bodes well. Platform, oh, we're at 40 now on platform one. At £40, 45 platform two, 50. Failure in profit. That is a result. 60, can't keep up, 70. 70, 75, 80, platform one. What were we I'm saying about a name? £100 on platform one. So at £100, £110. Was it important? £110. Yeah. Are we all done? Fair one then at £110. I literally can't believe that. I'm kind of flabbergasted with that. All right. I think you can start to get a bit cocky now, Phil. Do you think I've won this, Izzy? Oh, I think we need to go and work <laughs> it out. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt there'll be any surprises, but here goes. Izzy started this leg with £381.70, but after auction costs, she sees her fortune slip to £352.70. Bad luck. But Phil, who was trailing with £314.10, has had, all in all, a rather good day. After sale room fees, he beefs up his budget to a very impressive £574.30p and he's well in the lead going into the last leg. You know that gloating thing that you do? How do you do that? Oh, I think you've nailed it. <laughs> I, think, I don't think you need any advice from me on that one. <laughs> Let's go. Who's driving, you or me? Oh, you are. You're my chauffeur now. Oh, <laughs> Hey, rank has its privileges. 